begin to look at some of the chemical principles that we see in physiology. And we'll break this down into a three-part series here uh, to kind of keep the number of slides short. So we'll begin here with kind of some of the basics of chemistry itself. And so when we look at the chemistry of things, we have the, the elements themselves. And so the elements, we have individual atoms of each of those elements. And when we look at one single element, we see that we have essentially three different components within them. We have protons, neutrons, and electrons. And so we have them there. The protons and neutrons are in the center. And then the electrons are, in a sense, kind of floating around up in the outside. And so here we have our electrons floating in this outer shell here. We've got our protons and our neutrons in the center. And when we start to look at these structures, we can see that the protons there are positive and the electrons are negative. Neutrons have, as kind of the name implies, have no charge to them. So they don't affect the overall charge of our atoms that we have. If we have and take a look at kind of what we have for these structures, we can see that an individual atom can be either uh, positive or negative, especially when we start to combine them together. And so when we look at sodium here and chloride ions, and you start to look at the electron shells, we can see that the first shell of sodium here is completely full. It has two electrons in the outer shell. And then we move to the second shell here, and we have all eight filled together. And then this yellow one here actually used to be over here in the sodium. So for sodium, initially we have sodium here and we've got two electrons in the first shell and we've got eight electrons in the second shell. And then we've got a third shell here that has one additional unpaired electron. So it's sitting out there all by itself and so it has an unpaired electron there and it has in a sense kind of nobody to go with. If we combine it with a chloride ion, so sodium has 11 electrons there out in the, the components that are there. And when we look at the chloride ion, the chloride ion has 17 electrons. And that also leaves that outer shell of the chloride unpaired. So we've got a, a situation where we've got one missing in a sense from there. So the sodium is actually going to take its electron and move it over. And so it's going to jump over into the shell of the chloride ion there. And when that happens, we end up, because electrons, remember, are negatively charged, we're adding an, a, a negative charge over to chlorine, which makes it chloride, and we're taking one away from sodium. So if we take something that's negative away from something, it becomes positive. And if we add a negative to something else, it becomes negative. And so that's what we end up seeing there in the in sodium chloride is that we have the sodium having a positive charge and the chlorine chloride ion having a negative charge to it and so that's where we can tell within a component um, as they start to become ions uh, what is going on with them that is there so if an atom has more protons than electrons and so that's the the case here over in the the chloride ions we're going to end up having that negative charge <clears throat> that's there. So a substance that has an electrical charge to it, we end up calling ions. And so oftentimes we call these, these are our ions, these are our electrolytes. These are the things that are going to oftentimes dissolve in water on those. And so sodium ends up with a positive charge. Chloride ends up with a negative charge when we combine them together there. And these electrolytes then have the ability to dissociate in water. So they're going to, in a sense, kind of fall apart. This is why when you add salt to water or even add sugar to water, it's going to dissociate. It dissolves in that solute. And so it's going to dissolve inside the, uh, or in the, the solvent that is there, which is our water. <clears throat> so we combine our sodium. Here, once again, we have our outer shell electron moving over to pair up with the outer shell electron in the chlorine and so we end up now having a sodium ion we have a chloride ion the two of them combine together and when we look at the outer shells they're now essentially paired up 
there's none that are, are left with anything left over. And salt then forms a crystal structure. So we have this crystalline structure that is there um, once it's put together. But as soon as we add it into water, those sodium and chloride ions are then going to start to dissociate with our, we have our, our little Mickey Mouse looking water there. Um, that's there. And so we have our oxygen and we have our hydrogen ions there. And they're going to start to disassociate with there. And our sodium and our chlorides are going to then start to interact with the hydrogen ions and the oxygen. When we start to make these combinations of atoms together, and so we, when we combine the elements together with one another, we end up having chemical bonds form. And so these chemical bonds, as they start to form, start to form in slightly different ways depending upon what is uh, available inside the, the structures themselves. And so we just talked about uh, ionic bonds, and so ionic bonds form when we have a pair of electrons being shared between the two of them um, as they, they come together with those. And so they start to, to come within those themselves. Hydrogen bonds are going to have hydrogen at either end, and so be there um, with them. And then when we have two that are going to come together and the be attracted to one another, we have then covalent bonds. <clears throat> So covalent bonds themselves come together and we're now sharing those electrons in that outer shell. They're not donating them like we have with an ionic bond. They are actually coming together and sharing the two in between them. Once again, to make a nice uh, even outer shell. And so we have either a uh, single bond, we can have a double bond, or we can have a triple bond with those particular covalent bonds each going from essentially being more stable to less stable to even less stable as those bonds come together. And so here we have a interaction between water and glucose. And so when water comes together with glucose, once again, it's going to the solvent, our water is going to dissociate those molecules of our glucose when they are inside. And we're going to form weak hydrogen bonds in between the water and the glucose those bonds that are there are one of the things that we're going to utilize in our body in order to get us energy and so we're going to be able to break those bonds and so as we have these bonds in between individual components of the molecules themselves those chemical bonds have stored energy in them and if we break those bonds we liberate energy and so we're going to get that energy out of it um, some of that energy is going to be usable. Some of that energy is not going to be usable. We're going to lose it as things like heat in the process. And so with this, it's kind of like, in a sense, what you have in your car. You put energy into it in terms of gasoline. And then we very quickly break those bonds inside the, the gasoline. And we liberate lots and lots and lots of energy. And with that comes a large amount of heat, a larger amount of wasted energy in that process. With the body, we don't want to do that very quickly. And so in our body, we generally use for our energy, we use glucose. And glucose has within it a fair amount of energy stored in individual bonds. And if we were to break those bonds very instantly, that would liberate us a large amount of energy very quickly and it would in a sense harm us in order to liberate that energy slowly we end up transferring some of those bonds and the energy stored within them into adenosine triphosphate and so atp or adenosine triphosphate is going to be the energy source that we utilize in our bodies all the time this is our kind of our our universal energy source for the entire body that is there and with that we can then liberate a small amount of energy at a little bit of time. And that small amount of energy is going to be the energy that we need to move things like muscles in order to move things in and out of cells, all the different kind of normal functions that our body needs to be able to do. We can do so by breaking these chemical bonds that are there. And so we store it inside small little packages 
of ATP rather than one big glucose molecule and then instantly break that glucose molecule. So we end up getting a large amount of energy from it. There's still some waste. There's still some heat generated. Um, there's waste in the process itself, but we liberate a lot more energy that way that we can actually use. When we look at certain molecules, we have the potential for them to become polar. And so we have polarity within them. And with that, the electrons that are being shared between them, in this case, we have our hydrogen bonds here, those uh, covalently bonded hydrogen bonds in our water ends up giving us a process where the electrons themselves are not shared equally between the two. And so that ends up essentially pushing the hydrogen more so this way, the oxygen this way, and as I drew it before, we kind of have our Mickey Mouse looking structure that is there with our hydrogen ions on the outside here and our oxygen here. And with that polarity that is there, it gives, especially water, some special characteristics that we'll talk about in the next video. And so we have here sodium, and we're also going to have chloride ions as well that are there. And the sodium, we said, was positive, so it's going to interact with the relative negative charge of oxygen. So our water molecules here are going to be surrounded by or uh, our sodium is going to be surrounded by a water molecule in that way where the oxygen is facing the sodium. And if we were to draw a chloride ion, we would then have it in the opposite direction where we would have a hydrogen ion connected to a, draw it a little bit better there, to the so our positive hydrogen ions facing towards our chlorine on there. So we're gonna have chlorine out here within our water molecule itself. And next up, we'll start to talk about water in general as we move on to our next topic.